Hi everybody, welcome to TCM Talk. I'm Denise Jacuto, licensed acupuncturist and Chinese herbalist. And I am Kirsten Cowan, uh, licensed acupuncturist and Chinese herbalist. Hi. hi, hi there, welcome to TCM Talk for today. And we have a very special guest here today, <laughs> Spartacus T. <Tea> Cat. <laughs> Yeah, like all cats, he is extremely knowledgeable about self-care and spa days, so he'll be joining us as a special consultant today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, we wanted to start out by saying thank you for watching uh, now, and if you're watching on the replay, that's great too. Hi, thanks for joining us here today. Um, we're going to be talking about spa treatments that you can do for yourself at home this summer, um, but we should probably show you the links first. So if you want to see all of our thing, uh, the links we're going to talk about today, go to bit.ly slash periscope pins. And the links to all the archives of our videos are at uh, TCM Talk Vids, that uh, URL there, bit.ly slash TCM Talk Vids. And you can always email us at traditional Chinese medicine talk at gmail.com. All right. Um, so before we start going into the specifics of the spa goodies today, we just wanted to start out by saying that, um, you know, uh, self-care is a very important thing to do. Our last month we did a whole thing about trauma and shock and um, self-care. Uh, you can look at the archives for those periscopes, but, um, you know, it's n <laughs> the news in the past couple of days is not getting any easier. Um, there's still lots of horrible stuff going on in the world and it's time, it's, it's a good time to take some time out for yourself and, um, you know, replenish your own, your own energy and, uh, before you can take care of other people, um, you know, it's okay to step away from, uh, from the news for a little while and just, um, nourish yourself. That's, that's a really important thing to do. Um, and uh, anything else you want to add? Um, yeah, thanks, Denise. I, I, I really agree with everything you said. Obviously, we talked more about this in last month's um, scopes following the um, Orlando Pulse shooting. Um, and, uh, you know, I would, just, I would just say that caring for your body is a great way to reach for and care for your soul, actually. Um, so we're going to talk today about some recipes and drinks and everything that are nourishing and calming and soothing and fun to have while, um, while having a little spa day for yourself. And um, then we'll be, you know, talking about, you know, in further scopes this afternoon, um, other herbal recipes, easy to do stuff at home, um, clay masks, skin care treats, foot care treats, um, all of which to help you uh, give your body and your soul some tender loving care because it needs it, you need it, you deserve it, and, um, and uh, we can start making the world a better place by giving ourselves um, some tender loving care. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for adding that. Um, I was also just having a little bit of technical difficulty sharing <laughs> our scope on um, Twitter. So thanks for uh, bearing with me. So now I want to talk about some simple spa foods and drinks that you can make for yourself at home. Um, and uh, it's, we're not going to talk about catnip tea. I'm sorry, Spartacus, <laughs> today. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but uh, Spartacus likes catnip. <laughs> Um, what I want to talk about is uh, some are some teas and some infused waters that you could make. Ooh. Kirsten is holding uh, the she's sampling the strawberry basil um, infused water. Super simple, just cut up some strawberries and you can either tear the basil or chop it up with a knife. Um, you want to make sure you do cut it up a little bit so you can release the essential oils in the basil oh. into the water. And then just uh, put it in the fridge and, um, you know, steep it for as long as you want to. I mean, steep it, just keep it in the fridge for as long as you want to. Um, you know, you can either chomp on the basil or the, the strawberries at the end, or if you want, I rec I really, really love strawberry basil yogurt. Mm. So I would throw those in at the end um, into some yogurt. Um, so that's one good thing. Um, infused waters. Another infused water I love is is just sage water, infused sage, or you can add uh, some fruit to that as well. Like orange sage water is really good. Um, you know, go to your um, go to your local natural health store and look at the 
when you're in the vegetable section, look at the uh, look at the the um, herbs that are actually um, you know the cut herbs and uh, not the dried herbs necessarily, and see what's see what's fresh and experiment for yourself and see what you like. We have some suggestions on the Periscope pins board as well. A couple of pins I pinned, um, and. Um, the next one I wanted to show you is my tea, which is doesn't look like very much here. It's just bright, sunshiny, orangey color, which is really great um, for summer if you're in a place that's warm, not <laughs> like the Bay Area. Look, it matches my hair. Um, this tea is a combination of um, Hua, which is mimosa flower, which uh, kind of looks like this. You can see in here there is... Um, the darker little pieces are our roses, our Chinese roses. Um, let's see if we can see that a little bit close. There you go, a little tiny rosebud. And then the um, the more orangey gray bits are the m mimosa flower. An interesting name um, translation, Huan <laughs> Hua, means collective happiness flower. I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's telling you what it does right there. The mm -hmm. name. Um, so uh, these. Herbs are used in Chinese medicine. Yes, the mimosa flower is used as a calming herb. It's also used as an herb to move qi, which can calm you, as Kirsten was and I were discussing earlier um, before the scope. Um, by moving qi, it calms you in a slightly different way than by uh, nourishing your heart, which is another of the function of the mimosa flower. It does move qi to help you feel better, but it also does nourish your heart as well. The roses, the Chinese roses, which are called uh, Meigui Hua or uh, Rosa rugosa is the Latin name for the species that we use in Chinese herbal medicine. Um, so that's different from the the roses that you use uh, that where the rose essential oil comes from, right? That's right. So the that? sort of more typical Western rose, a damask rose, um, uh, which are tend to be, they do have red ones, um, but they're also um, commonly uh, in a pink a pink color, the kind of rose, the varieties of roses that you might see in a rose garden, mm -hmm. um, or if you are to get rose petals at a tea shop or um, at a Western herbalist. Okay, thank you yeah. for that difference. That's great to know. Um, you can um, you can ask certainly ask your Chinese medicine practitioner um, or an herbalist for these herbs. Um, they're relatively easy for us to get and. Um, I'm thinking about making a couple little bags to give to my patients over the summer. Um, so that for this one, you just um, boil some hot water and put the er, put the flowers in a teapot and just steep it for at least 20 minutes. The longer it sits, the um, the stronger the tea will get. You can adjust it if it's too strong for you. Add some more water to it. It does have a slightly sour taste, um, but it smell it also smells really nice and. And I think just the smell alone is calming. So that's a good thing to make for an at-home spa day. Um, another thing I pinned is, an, is a hibiscus schizandra soda um, mm -hmm. from Nishanga Bliss, who has the um, gastronicity blog, as well as um, she wrote a book about Chinese nutrition, um, which I am drawing a blank on right now. But uh, I think it's, it's one of the best books. Uh, just look up Nishanga Bliss. And um, it's about eating right all year long. I think that's healthy eating through the seasons. Yes, yeah, that's something. it. Yes, yeah, that's it. Um, let me get the bowls to show you. So we have um, hibiscus flower. It's a little hard to see here, I guess. I'll pick up a couple of petals. Um, hibiscus flower looks like this, and chisandra berries, which are little tiny dark berries see them there too whoops um, so for this uh, for this hibiscus chisandra soda um, Nishanga recommends you um, you first you steep the chisandra berries in water um, you boil them together for a little while and then um, you're gonna add the hibiscus and you're also then you're gonna add um, whey yogurt whey and she has a directions um, on her blog on how to make yogurt whey. It's super simple. You just need a quart of really good quality yogurt and a colander, some cheesecloth, and you and a little bit of patience. Um, and you strain the yogurt, and um, the yellow liquid that comes out is the whey. 
and you're going to make the soda with that and it's um it makes it into a, a probiotic soda it makes it into a fizzy drink mm. at least a little fizzy and um it tastes really good it's really good for the summertime um and then she recommends you can use the yogurt cheese what's left of the yogurt to make a salad however you want to with whatever vegetables you want to like cucumbers or or strawberry, or strawberry and basil. basil and yogurt, <laughs> like I do. Yeah. Maybe that would make a fantastic summery <laughs> spread. Actually, yes. Yeah. Um, so those are some those are some of the drinks I recommend. And uh, right before I move into the, some of the food suggestions, Kirsten, you want to talk about some other herbal teas? I think. Yeah, my favorite um, summertime drinks that with a spa-like flair um, uh, are to use the herbs mint, chamomile, and chrysanthemum. All three of these have a really cooling quality, so they're great for when the body feels overheated um, from too much uh, sun and fun, uh, heat and humidity, depending on the climate where you are. And I actually like to make sun tea with these all summer long, which is could not be easier. Basically, I just put, um, you know, maybe a quarter cup um, of uh, dried herb into a 64 ounce mason jar, fill it up with filtered water, put a lid on it and put it out in the sun for a couple mm. of hours um, and then strain that off and keep that in the fridge and just drink that all summer. I like mint on its own, mint and lemon balm together, chrysanthemum and mint. Um, any of these in combination are really fantastic. Um, and uh, another thing about all three of these herbs in particular, mint, chamomile and chrysanthemum, one, they're easy to find. Um, and two, they make a great bath. So um, mm -hmm. if you're really feeling overheated, you can actually make a strong, um, you know, strong uh, infusion of any of these herbs. You can do it in a pot on the stove uh, or in a teapot. Dump that into the bath um, or into a foot bath. Um, let it cool a little bit. Put your feet in that, pour yourself a cup of that, and you'll get the benefit <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the tea, of the herbs, um, outside and in. Uh, cool. That's a favorite summertime uh, treat of mine. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Um, the food suggestions, you know, really light, simple foods. If you're going to do it at home, spa day, salads. It's, you, you probably know that Chinese medicine practitioners don't usually recommend <laughs> cold foods or raw foods, but it's okay in the summertime. Um, it's easier for our bodies to, to digest um, raw foods when it's warmer outside. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, there is a lovely watermelon cake recipe from one of our, um, one of the people we went to acupuncture school with, Veronica um, Ang Vang. She has um, a watermelon cake, which is basically made with a watermelon as the base. In you just cut up a watermelon to look like a cake, and Aha. then you frost it with either coconut cream or whipping cream. And it's really simple and lovely, and I can't wait to try it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you might need help with that. Yeah. Maybe you can help me with that. That sounds like uh, that will go into our spa day that yes. we're, we'll be plotting. <laughs> um, so I think, uh, oh, I was going to say about the hibiscus and the schizandra. You can probably get the schizandra from your local acupuncturist, herbalist. Um, and hibiscus, you can probably just get at a natural food store or an herb shop. There's a really great shop here in um, the East Bay called the Oaktown Spice Shop. If you're in Oakland um, near Lake Merritt, I totally recommend going in there. Wonderful stuff. You know, I went in there with a purpose to get hibiscus flower, and I could have spent hours there. It smells wonderful, and they're super knowledgeable there too. Um, so thanks for watching. We're going to be back in a few minutes with the next scope and Kirsten will be talking about um, all kinds of foot pampering for summertime for your uh, footsies that are spending lots of time in sandals and probably getting kind of hot and tired. So we'll be talking about herbal foot baths, foot scrubs, um, and um, some other goodies like that. So tune in in just a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.